I am going to show you one of the easiest ways to add long-term conversation memory to your Langchain applications. So you've managed to create your first Langchain application, but the chatbot just can't seem to remember details about your conversation. You might have tried to add buffer memory to your Langchain applications, but the conversation still gets lost after the application is restarted. So how do applications like ChatGPT remember these conversations and the chat history for each? It is important to understand that Langchain applications are stateless. This means that when you send a message to Langchain, the chatbot has no way of viewing the previous messages. The solution is to assign memory to your application, for example, buffer memory. But unfortunately, the buffer memory gets cleared whenever the session is restarted. Luckily, Langchain makes it incredibly easy to use persistent databases as memory stores. To demonstrate this, I've gone ahead and added a persistent database to my application. Let's look at the difference. Let's send a message like, my name is Leon, and we do get a response back. So let's try asking, what is my name? And as you can see, the bot remembered our name. Now let's try this. I'm going to reset this session and let's ask it again, what is my name? And again, the bot was able to recall this information. In this video, I'm going to show you how to add long-term conversational memory to your Langchain applications using a Redis database. So let's get started. For this tutorial, I'm going to assume that you are familiar with the basics of Langchain. So if you are new to Langchain, then I highly recommend checking out my getting started video Video over here. Open up a new project in your code editor. I'll be using VS Code and let's instantiate a new node environment by running npm init y. Let's go ahead and install two packages. First, we will install the Langchain package by entering npm install Langchain and pressing enter. Then let's install one more package by running npm install.env. Let's create two files in our project folder. Create an index.js file, then also create a .env file. The .env package will allow us to read variables from this file, and the index.js file will contain the main code for our chatbot. Let's add our OpenAI API key to this .env file. In this file, enter the variable OpenAI underscore API underscore key. Then go over to platform.openai.com, create an account, click on personal, then click on view API keys. And then from this page, click on create new secret key. Give your key a name. I'll call mine Langchain and click on create secret key. Copy that API key and then paste it in your .env file. I will be deleting this key after this recording. So please use your own key. We are now done with the environment variable file. We can go ahead and close it. Let's make one more change to our project. Go to the package file and then add a new line under main with the property type and with a value of module. Let's go back to our index file. We can now go ahead and create our conversation chain. In order to create a conversation chain using Langchain, we need to define three objects. We need to define the memory object. It is this memory object that will be used to keep track of the chat history. We will then define our model, for instance, a GPT model. And lastly, we will define our chain. The chain will combine the memory and our LLM, and it is the chain that we will be interacting with. Let's start with this memory object. First, let's import the memory class from Langchain. At the top of this file, let's type import buffer memory from Langchain slash memory. Then let's go ahead and instantiate this memory object. I'll create a new variable called memory, which is equal to new buffer memory. And that is all we need for now. Next, let's go ahead and instantiate our model. For that, we will import the chat OpenAI model from Langchain. So let's import chat OpenAI from Langchain slash chat models 
slash OpenAI. Then let's go ahead and instantiate this model by creating a variable with the name model, which is equal to new chat OpenAI. And this class takes in an object as input. And in this object, we need to specify a few properties like the model name, which we will set equal to GPT 3.5 turbo. And then we will also add the temperature parameter with the value of say 0.5. Now that we have our memory and our model defined, let's create our chain. Let's import our chain from Langchain. So let's write import conversation chain from Langchain slash chains. So then let's create a new variable called chain, which is equal to a new conversation chain. And this class also takes an object as input. So let's add the first property, which is the LLM that we want to use. And we'll set this LLM equal to our model. Secondly, we need to specify the memory, which will set equal to the variable memory. And because these two names are the same, I'll simply remove this. We can now go ahead and interact with this chain. We can do that by calling the chain object and on chain, we can call the call method. The call method takes an object as input and we only need to pass in one property called input. And this will contain the input from the user. For example, my name is Leon. This method is asynchronous. So we need to await the response and let's assign this response to a variable like so. Lastly, let's go ahead and write this response to the console. We can run our bot in the terminal by typing node followed by the file name, which is index. I'm going to run this and it is going to fail, but I will explain the failure in a second. When running this, I'm getting the message OpenAI or Azure OpenAI key not found. And that is because the model expects us to pass in that OpenAI API key. There are a few ways to do that. In the model, we could pass in the property OpenAI key and then followed by the key value. However, we can omit that value as long as we have the key set up in the env file. So all we need to do is to import the environment variables into this file as well. I'm actually going to add that at the top of this file. So what we need to do is type import all as .env from .env. And on the next line, we can type .env config like so these two lines will fetch the variables from the env file and make them available to our program let's try running this again by running node index and this time we do get a response back from our chatbot so let's look at the limitation. What if I change this text to what is my name? We will now expect the chatbot to remember my name. So let's run this again. And oh no, we are getting this response. I'm sorry, but I don't have access to personal information. That is because although we assigned buffer memory to this chain, this memory gets cleared as soon as the session terminates. In other words, as soon as this code has finished executing. So now we can have a look at attaching a persistent database to this buffer memory. There are many different third-party databases that you can use for conversational memory. And Redis is one of the most popular of those databases. And in this video, we will be making use of Upstash to make this process as simple as possible. And I also want to mention that Upstash is the sponsor of this video. And I highly recommend you look into using Upstash for your projects. Go over to upstash.com and click on login. After creating your account and logging into Upstash, you will be presented with a dashboard like this. If not, ensure that you click on Redis in the menu. Let's go ahead and create our first Redis database. Click on create database and give your database a name. I will leave the type as regional and from the region, I'll just select North Virginia. And let's click on create. After creating the database, we are presented with this screen. From here, we can view the different options for connecting to this database. But you'll see in a second how easy it is to integrate an Upstash Redis database with Langchain. From this menu, you can also view the usage of this database, which includes the amount of commands that you've sent, the amount of storage that is used, as well as costs. 
We can also click on data browser to view any data assigned to this database. And once we have conversations with our chatbot, we will see those conversations showing up on the screen. We'll come back to that in a second. Right, so let's go back to our project and let's add our upstash Redis database to Langchain. Back in our code, we need to install one more package in order to give us access to the Redis database. In the terminal, enter npm install at upstash slash redis. Then from our imports, we need to import something from langchain slash stores slash message slash upstash redis. And from upstash redis, we will import the upstash redis chat message history. So now all we have to do is attach this redis database to our buffer memory. So within buffer memory, we'll pass in an object. And within this object, we'll specify a property for the chat history. Chat history will have a value of new upstash redis chat message history. And this class takes in an object as input as well. And thankfully, it's not too many properties. We need to specify a session ID. I'll get back to that in a second, but I'll just pass in a string value for now. And we also need to specify a property called config. Config also takes in an object that needs two properties, a URL, I'll just make it a string for now. And secondly, it needs a token value, which I'll also just make a string for now. Let me explain these properties. The session ID is simply a unique identifier of the conversation. If we go back to ChatGPT for a second, you can imagine that these two conversations have unique identifiers sitting behind them. And that will tell the chatbot which chat history to fetch based on the active conversation. We can give this any value that we want. I'll just call it one, two, three. But in a production system, you might want to generate a unique session ID for every new conversation that the user starts. Now, let's have a look at our config. For the URL, we can simply go back to upstash, click on details, and then click on this tab called at upstash slash redis. We can simply go ahead and copy this URL and then add it to our project. Lastly, we need to specify the token. By default, the token is hidden, but you can display the token value by clicking on this eyeball icon over here. So go ahead and copy your token value. And if you want, you can simply paste that token in between quotes over here. But I'm going to hide my token by going to .env. I'll simply create a new variable called upstash token and I'll paste in the value over here. And instead of passing a string value, I'll simply refer to the environment variable by typing process.env.upstash token. Let's go ahead and test this. Let's change this prompt to my name is Leon and let's run this in the console by typing node index and we are getting a response saying hello Leon how can I assist you if we go back to upstash we can click on data browser and we can now see the conversation using that session ID that we specified in the code if we look at the code we call the session ID 123 and within the session we can see the chat history now let's change this prompt to something like what is my name and let's run this again and as you can see the bot remembered this information and if we go back to upstash we can see the messages being added to this database. And this gives us a persisted conversation memory. And it is really as simple as that. In a production system where you have multiple conversations, you can simply dynamically swap out this value and Langchain will do all the heavy lifting. We are able to send additional properties to this class. And one very popular property is the session time to live. And here we can specify the time in seconds that the session will be valid for. In this example, the session will expire after five minutes. By removing this property, the session will be set to never expire. All that's left now is to copy this code and to add it to your very own application. So if you would like to learn how to create this user interface for your Langchain applications, then please check out this video over here. If you enjoyed this video, then please consider subscribing to my channel. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.